The question is, find the number of quanta of radiations of frequency 5.03 into 10 raised to power 13 second hours that must be absorbed in order to melt 5 gram of ice. The energy required to melt 1 gram of ice is 333 joules. Okay. I hope that you have read the question nicely. Over here, we are given with the energy required to melt 1 gram of ice, which is 333 joules. So, energy required to melt 5 gram of ice, what it will be? Okay. So, energy required to melt 5 gram of ice is equals to 333 multiplied by 5 which is equals to 1665 joules. Clear? So, please keep this particular thing in your mind. Okay. Fine. Now, over here we are given with the frequency and we have to find out the number of quanta that must be absorbed in order to melt 5 gram of the ice. So, energy associated with one quantum energy associated with one quantum. It is equals to H nu. Okay. Now, what is the value of H Planck's constant? It is equals to 6.62 into 10 raised to power minus 34 joules a second. What is the value of frequency? So, the value of frequency has been given 5.03 multiplied by 10 raised to power 13 second words. So, when you will multiply these two terms 6.62 and 5.03, it is a very basic multiplication which you have to do, it is your part. I am straight away writing the answer for this, it is very very easy calculation. So, it will be 33.29 multiplied by 10 raised to power minus 21 joules minus 34 and it is plus 13. So, it becomes minus 21. Okay. So, I can just write 33.30 approximation 10 raised to power minus 21 joules. I can straight away write this particular thing for energy associated with one quantum. I hope you have understood the approximation which I have done over here. Fine. We have to find out the number of quanta that must be absorbed. So, number of quanta that must be absorbed in order to melt 5 gram of the ice. It is equals to the energy required to melt 5 gram of the ice, 1665 joules divided by energy associated with one quantum, which is 33.3 multiplied by 10 raised to power minus 21 joules. So, joules cancelled out with joules. So, see, one thing uh, is actually for sure over here. So, when you will multiply 33.3, with 5. Let us see what is the result going to come out. Okay. So, 33.3 multiplied by 5. 5 threes are 15. 1 carrying. 6 1 carrying. Okay. Fine. So, 5 threes are 15. 1 carrying. 5 threes are 15. 1 carrying. 6 15. 5 threes 15 and 1. It is 166.5. Okay. So, straight away I can just write it is 50 over here. Okay. So, it will be 50 multiplied by 10 raised to power 21. Okay. I can also write it as 5 into 10 raised to power 22. Okay. So, yeah, I will just say straight away now one thing that option number C is actually the right answer to this particular question. Yeah, 5 into 10 raised to power 22 is the right answer for this particular question. Therefore, option number C is absolutely right. The question is, the compressibility factor or the compressibility of a gas is less than unity at STP. Therefore, its molar volume is. So, over here, basically we are talking about Z. This is known as compressibility factor. This is known as compressibility factor. Okay. This you might know because you have read this particular concept in states of matter. Clear. To this compressibility factor, we can call it as compression factor or gas deviation factor. So, basically, this particular factor, compressibility factor is a correction factor, is a correction factor that describes the deviation of real gas from ideal gas. Fine. So, we know one thing also 
that this compressibility factor Z is equals to molar volume for real gas divided by molar volume for ideal gas. Over here in the question only we are given that the compressibility of a gas is less than unity, less than unity at STP. Now at STP the molar volume is 22.4 liters. So molar volume for real gas divided by 22.4 less than 1. So molar volume for real gas is less than 22.4. So basically this is the result which is going to come out. So we'll match our option, our result with the options given. And yeah, option number B is absolutely the right answer. Rest all the other options are wrong. Therefore, option number B is the right answer. So the question is, an iron has electronic configuration, Kr, that means krypton, 4D4, placed in group 6 in the modern periodic table. The iron is, okay. So over here, we are given with the electronic configuration, krypton, then 4D4. And this particular metal is actually been placed in group 6, okay. So, we have to actually find out the iron. Okay, fine. No issues. So, if this particular metal belongs to group 6, it means the valence electron in its ground state is 6. Okay, valence electrons in its ground state is 6. Okay, but... If we just look into the given electronic configuration, we observe one thing that over here, there is two valence electron less. Okay. So, again, metal belongs to group 6 and if it belongs to group 6, that means the valence electron in ground state is 6. But in the given electronic configuration, we observe that there are two less valence electron. It means the element is in plus two oxidation state. Okay. It means element is in plus two oxidation state. So if it is in plus two oxidation state, option number B and option number C, they are ruled out. We are only left with option number A and option number C. Okay, fine, no issues. Now, one more thing to be noticed over here, that if we just write the electronic configuration in the ground state, we'll be writing it as Krypton 4D5 and 5S1. This will be the electronic configuration in the ground state. Okay, having six valence electron. You can observe it. Fine. So this particular electronic configuration belongs to which particular metal? You might have read one thing about chromium. The electronic configuration of chromium was argon 3D5 and 4S1. That means this particular metal belongs to the same group which chromium belongs to, okay? So, if we just uh, look into the group for chromium, so after chromium, it comes molybdenum, okay? So, if the electronic configuration of chromium is 3D54S1, then one element down this particular chromium, it will be having the electronic configuration 4D5 and 5S1, okay? So, it is option number C, which is absolutely the right answer, Molybdenum having plus 2 charge. Molybdenum is in plus 2 oxidation state. I think you are getting my point what I want to say. Okay, so this is the electronic configuration for chromium. This is the electronic configuration for molybdenum. I hope this particular point for this particular question has been clear to you. Question is, for which of the following the entropy change is negative? Okay. So, I will say for this particular question, one single statement. 
that since over here we are given with the options conversion of ozone to oxygen gas conversion of graphite to diamond okay so entropy change will be negative for that particular case in which the randomness the disorderliness of the system is decreasing if we are talking about the reaction i will say that the entropy change will be negative for that particular reaction where total number of moles of gaseous reactant okay total number of gaseous moles of the reactant is greater than the total number of gaseous moles of the product okay so in two cases or in these cases the entropy change is going to be negative again i'm repeating number one where the disorderliness or the randomness system is decreasing and yeah if i'm talking about the reaction so very easier way to find out that whether the entropy is increasing or decreasing so if the entropy is coming out to be negative it means total number of gaseous moles of the reactant is greater than the total number of gaseous moles of the product okay now if i just talk about option number a conversion of ozone to oxygen gas so twice of ozone gas being converted into twice of oxygen gas so over here what you are seeing that both the reactant and product they are in the gaseous phase and yeah entropy of gases is greater than the entropy of liquid and solid okay so that particular thing of liquid and solid is not involved over here the thing involved over here is about the number of moles number of gaseous moles of the product and reactant so over here if we just see the number of gaseous moles of the product and the gaseous moles of the reactant we observe over here the delta ng value is greater than 0 for this particular reaction why so see delta ng is equals to total number of total number of gaseous moles of the product minus total number of gaseous moles of the reactant clear so number of moles number of gaseous moles of the product is 3 and number of gaseous moles of the reactant it's actually 2 so delta ng is coming out to be 1 greater than 0 so for this particular case entropy is going to be positive entropy is increasing clear so delta s for this particular case is going to be positive now if i talk about conversion of graphite to diamond see you will be studying in solid state about graphite and diamond structure let me tell you one thing that graphite is actually conducting okay it's a kind of a conductor okay why because over here in graphite there is delocalized electron okay in graphite structure we find delocalized electron because of that particular free and delocalized electron there is a conduction property in graphite whereas if i talk about diamond so if we look into the structure of diamond uh, what we observe that all the four valence electrons of the carbon is been used in covalent bonding so over here we can just say that diamond is actually behaving as an insulator whereas graphite is behaving as a conductor now why i am saying this in regard to entropy c when there is a conversion of graphite to diamond what is happening that the randomness of the system is decreasing the disorderliness of the system is decreasing because diamond structure is very much a packed structure organized structure in comparison to the structure of graphite so if diamond structure is packed and organized whereas graphite is not so that means the randomness is decreasing the disorderliness is decreasing which means entropy is decreasing and for this particular case delta s value is going to be negative therefore option number b is absolutely the right answer to this question the question is a gas occupies 2 liter at stp standard temperature pressure it is provided with 58.63 joule of heat so that its volume becomes 2.5 liters at 1 atm pressure calculate the change in its internal energy and that to in joules okay so from first law of thermodynamics we know that change in internal energy is equals to the sum of heat plus work done the sum of heat supplied and plus the work done so over here we know 
the heat provided, the heat supplied, which is 58.63 joules. But we need to calculate out the work done. So work done, W is equals to minus P delta V. This is very basic. You all know. Okay. The pressure given to us is 1 atm. So minus 1 multiplied by delta V, the change in volume. Okay. So it's 2.5 minus 2. So answer over here comes out to be minus 0 0.5 what? liter okay and atm but we need our answer in joule okay so convert liter into meter cube and atm into pascal why because one joule is equals to meter cube into pascal clear because of it so minus 0 0.5 now one liter is equals to how many meter cube it is 10 raised to power minus 3 meter cube and 1 atm is equals to how many pascals it is actually 1.01325 multiplied by 10 raised to power 5 pascal clear now this is kind of a negligible thing we can account for so we'll just write straight away minus 0 0.5 multiplied by 10 raised to power minus 3 multiplied by 10 raised to power 10 raised to power 5 meter cube pascal clear so it becomes minus 50 meter cube pascal now 1 joule is equals to 1 meter cube pascal so it will be minus 50 joule okay substitute this particular value of work done over here in this particular expression so delta u now becomes equals to that means change in internal energy it is equals to the heat supplied which is 58.63 joules okay plus the work done work done over here is minus 50 so minus 50 joule so answer is going to come out as 8.63 joule so this is the change in internal energy so option number a is absolutely right for this particular question